and representatives of the AAA, uh, PBP, uh, Deputy Breed Smith, and your group have 30 minutes. Carla, um, I want to start by uh, emphasising the word prudent in this budget because it was a word bandied about very much all day yesterday and again today about how we need to be prudent, we're in recovery, we're on our feet again, and we need to be prudent with the public monies. Um, and just to put it in context, I want to paint a picture of a fiscal space that we are told by the government and others amounts to a total of 1.3 billion euro. Now, what they ignore when they talk about the fiscal space is a whole tranche of other wealth and revenues that are available to the population of this country but are not being touched by this government or indeed haven't been touched by uh, previous governments. Um, need I mention the apple tax of 13 billion that may not all come back to the Irish state but certainly a chunk of, of it is due to us. There is 9 billion uh, in NAMA which we are told we can't spend because we'd be breaking European fiscal rules. We're continuing to pay 6.3 billion on the interest of the debt to Europe. A lot of that is odious debt that is not the responsibility of the Irish people. And we are ignoring at least 4 billion in effective rate of 12.5% possible collection of corporation tax. So we've had a lot of waffle from ministers and others about how wise they all are and how they are prudent. And the word is thrown around like a badge of honour. Look at us now. Look at us. We, we spell prudence the correct way. And that prudence amounts to the following. Landlord's interest relief will be 8 million. The help to buy boon to builders and developers will cost us 50 million. Now, I know there are people out there who want to buy houses uh, over the rate of 600,000, but uh, this measure is definitely going to drive up the cost of housing. The new re reduced rate of capital gain tax for entrepreneurs disposing of business interest to 1 million euro will cost us 13 million. The increase in tax amounts uh, of inheritance over 300,000 will cost us 22 million. Reduced dirt will cost us 9 million. So there's 100 million worth of prudence. A series of measures unnecessary, unneeded, and aimed at sections of society that indeed Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil will reward them in the future uh, with their votes. That is indeed very, very prudent. Then we come to the multinationals and the measures that are not taken, the opportunities to alter tax and revenue streams coming to the people of this country in a meaningful way. To take one example, we have reduced the VAT rate on the hospitality and tourism sector and kept it at a reduced rate, costing the state 620 million. What is the justification for this prudence from this government? In a sector that is struggling and fragile, this is not the case. Since 2014, the accommodation and hospitality sector have had an increase of profitability that passed and way overpassed the 2007 levels by 40%. So shareholders and CEOs in this sector enjoy the largest. And what happened to the workers at the hands of this prudent government? And indeed, we are seeing... Uh, the proposal to increase the minimum wage by a glorious 10 cents an hour. That's not prudence, uh, Keon Corla, that's total indifference to uh, something like 20% of our workforce who depend on the minimum wage and will see their glorious earnings increase by about three euro a week. Just point out in case anyone's missed it, the very, very wealthy in this country were very, very wealthy before the crisis. They remained wealthy during the crisis and they've grew wealthier since the crisis. They've been untouched by this budget. We have a tax haven, the foundations of which were built by Fianna Fáil, by Charlie Hockey, Bertie Ahern and McCreevy, to mention a few historical ca characters, and it remains a tax haven under the watch of Enda Kenny and Minister Noonan. And we contrast this talk of prudence with the, app, the attitude to Apple and to others. Contrast the largest to landlords and corporate bodies and the prudent attitude to young unemployed people who will gain an extra 2.70 a week, 2 euro 70 cents, not even the bus fare into the city for a job interview. And indeed contrast it with the rise that the TDs in this house will get of around 5,000 euro. This again, uh, Keon Corla, is not prudence, it's indifference. 
It's blindness that ignores workers, the unemployed and the low paid. And with all the talk of the increases in social welfare, all of the uh, social welfare recipients will be on less than they were in 2009 after this budget, except for the old age pensioners. And that's not to resent it going to the old age pensioners, but to draw attention to the fact that even the lone parent um, payment allowance that's been heightened will mean that they're still €37 Euro a week off, but worse off than they were uh, prior to 2009. So ministers can pat, them, pat themselves on the back for measures such as childcare and the proposals to give a minority of parents who may benefit uh, from accessing a place, but there's a blind spot to the workers in this sector who are on precarious hours and on low pay. And we ignore the reality that you cannot provide decent social services in any sphere unless you provide decent jobs and decent wages. I want to concentrate on a couple of other things, the main one being housing. What really exposes the farce of this prudence is the measures announced to deal with the housing crisis. Remember that there are 140,000 families in housing need on local authority lists and over 6,000 in homeless accommodation. And all of this is as a fallout from the crisis caused by the very bankers and developers that are nursed and cajoled by Fianna Fáil in the past and by the current government backed up by Fianna Fáil. Apparently, it is to help those who suffered the most from the crisis that we are taking that prudent approach. Not the homeless or the people in dire needs of homes. No, the prudent approach is to help the developers, the builders and the landlords who were responsible for the crisis in the first instance. And indeed to help some of those who may aspire to buy a house over €600,000. Uh, €600, the figure of €1.3 billion to deal with the housing crisis is a lie. It was another opportunity for Minister Coveney to announce again and again and again the same headline figure for the same rhetoric that he has done on countless occasions since launching his Rebuilding Ireland programme. If we had one local authority house for every time he had a PR opportunity on this figure, then we'd be doing well. What funds have been earmarked to build good quality local authority public housing to see the stock of public housing rise? None. Under various headings and trying to avoid double counting and wishful estimates of the future, the ambition is only to build, stroke, acquire, including the false uh, idea of rapid build housing programme, a total of perhaps 1,500 social houses if we're lucky. I just want to mention finally that there are other very serious cuts in this budget that are going under the radar. The arts is being cut by 16%. I remember quite vividly, as others will, how gloriously and poetically and dramatically many ministers stood in this House a few months ago to speak to a motion on the arts and how it needed increased funding. The gallery was packed with interest groups, young artists and people from the community sector who rely on public funding for the arts. And they were eulogised and praised and then we cut their funding by a glorious 16%. The sports budget has been cut and I have to say personally I am utterly shocked and ashamed that the budget for the Irish language and the Gaeltacht has been cut by 9%. This seems like a deliberate, a deliberate ploy to undermine our heritage, our language and our culture. And I'll just finish by saying this. In his speech, Minister Noonan announced that he was going to tackle uh, corporate tax avoidance. That in the future he's going to appoint somebody to look at this sphere and to come up with measures to criminalise tax avoidance avoidance, closing tax loopholes and going after those who don't pay and who try to avoid their tax. Well, I'm going to appeal to Mr Noonan publicly here today. If he sincerely means that, he can take one measure now. This government can take one measure, and that is to drop the appeal against the Apple ruling. If they want to show this country that they're serious about fairness and tax equality, drop the appeal and begin to look at really addressing the crisis for the vast majority, which this budget does nothing to do.